This is the grade eight math practice test for TN Ready. Currently question number 21. Becky and Luke bought the same kind of pencils and erasers. Becky spent $1.45 for two pencils and three erasers. Luke spent two sixty-five dollars for five pencils and one eraser. What is the cost of one eraser? So as somebody who looks at algebra problems probably more than is rationally appropriate, just because you have to work with it, um, I tend to look for patterns and things, and this one meets one of the patterns that I generally look for, which it meets all the criteria of a 3, 2, 1 style problem. Um, three sets of numbers. In two groups. And I'm looking for one value. One, two, three sets of numbers. Becky and Luke are the two groups, and I'm looking for the value of an eraser. The fact that it's one is just coincidental. It could be six erasers. I'd still only be looking for one value. I'll look for one answer. Um, so anytime I have a three, two, one, I think, oh, it's probably a systems of equations question. So we're going to solve systems of equations. I need to set up a statement about Becky's life. I have no idea about her hair, just in case you're wondering. Um, but I do know that she spent two pencils, or she bought two pencils and three razors and spent $1.45. So I'm going to make that known. I'm going to do variables here. And I actually wrote that under a little bit more than I want to do, like that. Plus three erasers equals $1.45. And you may think, well, what's with the big E there? Well, a lowercase e actually has a mathematical meaning, but that's not really why I do it. I do it because my handwriting is awful, so it makes it easier for me to remember what the variables are. Five pencils for Luke, and he bought one eraser, and he spent $2.65. Now, I'm going to solve this using two different methods. The first is substitution, and then I'm going to look at elimination. Between those two, I'll draw a big smiley face or something on the screen. So if you want to kind of move forward a little bit to the elimination, feel free to do that. For substitution, when I do substitution, the thing I want to do is redefine one of the variables in terms of something else. So, for instance, if I have a brother, instead of referring to myself as myself, other people, his friends, whatever, may refer to me as his brother. So it's just the same, it means the same original idea, but we're just redefining it. So we want to know something about erasers. So what if we just got rid of all the pencils by talking about them as if they're erasers? So say we find out that two pencils is the same as four erasers. So we just make those adjustments. We're going to do that here. This is not as clean, unfortunately. So I'm going to pick either one of these. The easy move for me is to pick this one because it already has one eraser here. So what I want to do is figure out how can I set it up so pencils are by themselves and they're equal to some amount of erasers or erasers plus other stuff. So I'm going to start here. I always like to rewrite just to keep things looking clean. I'm trying to get this variable by itself. I suppose I could highlight that, but that would have been too much work, right? There we go. I'm trying to get this by itself. It's an equation, so I'll draw a line here to separate one side from the other. If operations are on the same side, I do what they say. If they say add, I'll add, for instance. If I need to eliminate them and do something to both sides, I need to use the opposite of what's shown. I'm trying to get this by itself, so that means this entire term, this 1e business over here, is not helpful. So I need to eliminate plus 1e. If I'm going to eliminate it, I need to do the opposite operation. This is addition, so I'll subtract. What you'll find a lot of times is people tend to see these and always think it's the divide time. Like, let's just divide. No need to divide when you're moving an entire term. If it was 2e, for instance, I would subtract 2e. The only time you divide is when the relationship between the variable that you're looking for and the number or coefficient is multiplied. And then you divide to eliminate. It's the opposite. Also, visually speaking, if you are doing the opposite of addition, you need to have minus here. 
but if this were, if I'm getting to the division stage and it's negative, you actually divide by a negative. The only time you change sign is when it was required by operation. It is here. To get rid of plus one, I need to subtract one. Now I have zero, or uh, now I have zero E's. 5P, I'm almost done. Negative one E plus 2.65, because these are not like terms. This has no E in it. It's just, they can't add three orange things and two red things and see how, m you can tell how many total you have, but you can't make them red-orange. They're still red and still orange, so, uh, unless it's paint dots or something. Eliminate five times P, still trying to get P by itself. It shows multiply, I need to divide. And I need to divide everything. Now, this is a calculator allowed section. So when I'm working this type of problem, I can use a calculator. And because the answers here are in money form, which is AKA decimal form, it'd just be easier for me to use it, even if I only have a simple calculator. This is the most basic of all human calculators, I think. Um, so one and it's negative. Again, it's multiply and then divide by 5, and that gives me negative 0.2. Plus whatever this is. Clear this out. Zero point five three. So this statement here is the same as this. So anytime I see this in an equation, I can substitute it with that, and that's what I'm going to do. I'll leave that up there. Now, I had these saved from before. Um, I use this equation to perform this step, so I'll use this equation to perform the other step. Why not, right? So I'll rewrite it first just to make everything easier to follow. What I'm going to do, this is 2 times p, that the coefficient and the variable touching means multiply. I'm going to do 2 times this whole thing. So I just took the p that was originally there and changed it out. Then I'm going to write down every other thing that I have and move on with my life. The first step at this point would be to distribute. So this is a calculator section again, you might want to use it. I mean, I know it's negative 0.4, but sometimes it's nice to validate. If you don't have time to validate and you just know it, just go with it, it's fine. One point oh six. And this is a positive times a negative, so you get a negative. This is a positive times a positive, so it's positive. And write everything else I, I didn't use. Now, I'm ready to combine like terms because I have like terms on the same side. So 3 minus 0.4. Yep. Oops. 3 plus 0.4 negative, if that's the way I'm going to do it. I mixed them up there. You should never subtract something and get a larger number unless they're negative. And so what I should have done is 3 minus this, but I did 3 minus negative. Be careful. Now, this is the variable I'm looking to get by itself because I'm trying to find an eraser, right? So I think what's the furthest thing away on the same side of the line? It's this plus 1.06, or 1 and 6 hundredths, if you'd rather. I'd rather not. Point three nine. Now this is a multiplication, so I need to do a division to get rid of it. If this was negative, by the way, I'd divide by negative on both sides. 
You're not always looking for the signs to be different. You have to pay attention to the operator. Point one five, or fifteen cents. Can I test? You you could if you can figure out if you want to rewrite this part. So let's get back into. this where we rewrote I mean you could certainly find the value of the pencils and then try to work it out there but I don't think during the test you're gonna have time to do that I'm just being realistic here oh, plus 3 e and we think that e is 15 cents so every time I do that that's hideous but And you may not be able to even do that in here. Um, negative 0.2 times 0.15 equals that, and that's plus 0.53. I was just doing the uh, internal part here. And then 3 times 0.15 is 0.45. And this is 1. One forty-five. So 15 cents is the correct answer. So that's all for substitution. You just want to rewrite the original number or the original variable, or the one you're trying to eliminate in terms of the variable that you actually want. I don't care how much pencils are, I just want to know how much erasers are. So if I rewrite the value for pencils in terms of erasers, then I'm just left with a single variable that I can solve from. So that's substitution. Now I'm going to draw my little smiley face here, and then I'm going to move on to do um, Elimination, which is what I suggested I was going to do earlier. So go back to my original equations. If you don't need this, don't stick around. What are you doing? Live your life. Now, the thing about elimination is I can use the fact that if I multiply one term in an equation by something, I can just multiply all the other terms by it and it'll be equivalent, um, or it'll still make a statement that it's an equivalent. I'm going to use that to my advantage to just eliminate things out. And there are a few ways that you can do it. You could subtract these two, but I like to add them together because then the signs are easier for me to follow. I get lost in subtracting. Subtracting negatives is a big mess for me. So, I'm going to make it so this 3e can be eliminated by 1e. So in order to get rid of plus 3e, I need to subtract 3e, right? That would make it zero e's. Um, so that would be a quick way to go about finding what the value for pencils is. And then we can use that information in just a minute. So that's what I'll do. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to multiply this entire term by negative 3. So negative 3 times 5 is negative 15p. Negative 3 times 1e is negative 3e. And then I've got this ridiculous negative 3 times 2.65. Negative 7.95. And I'll just write the original one on top. You see now that these two cancel out? That's what I'm trying to do. And then I do 2 minus 15 gives me negative 13. And then I have to do this math, which, good thing there's a calculator because I'm mega lazy. The relationship between these two right now is add-subtract relationship, so I'm not treating this as a negative anymore, I'm treating it as a subtraction. Negative 
Divide by negative 13 on both sides. Point five. 50 cents, that's how much pencils cost. Now I can use that information in either one of these, really. So I'll take Luke's, who knows? I used Becky's before, right? So let's worry about Luke. So I take my pencil information, which by the way is why they give you B, because they think you might do elimination and pick the wrong variable. So make sure that you write down the variables and maintain them in space, otherwise you'll do a ton of work and not get it correct, and that's super annoying. So I do 5 times 0 0.5 plus, because this goes here, 1E e equals 2.65. 5 times 0 0.5 is 2.5. Now the relationship between, because again, I'm trying to get the E by itself, the relationship between this 2.5 and this 1E is addition subtraction. And there's nothing to make me think it's not addition because it's positive. So I'm going to subtract 2.5. Again, don't divide here. There's no variable. And you end up with, 1e is equal to 0 0.15, right there. So that's elimination. I've had substitution in here. I've had elimination. What else could you do? Well, I mean, if you had a graphing calculator, you could graph, I suppose. Or you could do matrices. Or you could just graph by hand if you are the best grapher by hand ever and can do it in a quick amount of time. Find one method is my suggestion and stick with it for now. Uh, until you need to use a specific one to meet their requirements. But for in this point, find one that you like. Just keep using that one, and I think you'll be better served all the way around.